welcome to the Ramon Foster Show, brought to you by the Get Go Cafe and Market, where they're open twenty four seven, serving hot, fresh food. Happy Wednesday, Moan. Happy hump day. Yeah, good day. Yeah, you like that, don't you, DK? <laughs> yeah, it, 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 every single time. <laughs> There's yes. a lot going on in football, uh, and we're going to talk about the Tyree Kill uh, trade, trade. Uh, in the second segment, and we're going to have a fun Hey Moan segment for you coming up later, but let's open up today with Mike Tomlin's very favorite player who ever lived, according to everybody, <laughs> Malik Willis, uh, the quarterback yeah. At Liberty, who looks like he might be QB1 of this class. And, and let's mm-hmm. start there, Moan, because you've seen Willis and you've seen mm-hmm. Kenny Pickett from Pitt. And who is QB1? Does it, is it based on you know criteria? What do you need? What do you like? It's based off what you need most of the times, uh, unless it's best available when it comes uh, you know, down to you picking your guy. Specifically talking about these quarterbacks is very interesting to me. Uh, when you ask me who's QB1, both of them got their like deficiencies. I'm talking about major defici- deficiencies, deficiencies as I get my words together. <laughs> um, but you, you hump day exactly um but you, you have a guy like Kenny Pickett man that just kind of burst up on the scene and his was he a fifth year senior six year senior yeah. at Pitt yeah fifth yeah fifth year senior and and just kind of took the world by storm and then of course we hit this draft process and he's just getting knocked down knocked down by everybody like what took so long was it the system he was in and I'm guessing he's very familiar with Matt Canada when it comes down to that offense that's a part of why it makes sense for him to go to Pittsburgh if they were going to pick him I honestly think he may be gone a little bit before. On the other side, we have uh, Malik. And I'm just thinking to myself, well, this kid has been shown all over TV through and through that he's a Pittsburgh Steeler for the most part. His last throw (laughs) at the end of his pro day, he's running down. And you like I think everybody enjoys seeing the players have fun because at the end of the day, like you become a grown man playing a kid's sport. But there's still a lot of kid in you. He's celebrating with his teammates and people on the sideline. But in the background of those I clips, I saw him. <laughs> about two or three people back there that you're very familiar with, right? Brandon Hunt, who we talked about yesterday. Uh, was Kev in the background also? He, not but, in that shot, but he was not, there. Yeah. But he was there. One in particular, though, Mike mm-hmm. Tomlin. I'm with the grin to, on his face. Yeah, the It's hard to describe that grin. <laughs> he has he looks like he's like about five years old when yeah. he has it and his eyebrows go up and his his mouth stretches from ear to ear yeah and it almost looks devilish it, but yes he's watching Malik Willis celebrate and for anybody who didn't see the video you got this to pass that he made it was just, it's all simulated football and whatever else it's here, but that's very what much like who's are. the young young quarterback in new york zach wilson it's very much like that one where he just drops a bomb and just huh it looks good it looks good especially since he was running to his left mm-hmm. and then and then pulling up and throwing against his body f- like five miles to hit this blazing receiver mm-hmm. in full stride in the end zone all lands mm-hmm. in the end zone <laughs> And maybe it was just a release. You know, that's certainly what it felt like. Because like you said, it was the end. Uh, But to see the head coach of the Pittsburgh Steelers on the sideline really enjoying this, uh, Moan, that's, well, you tell me. Is that his kind of player? Why does he appreciate that? Why does he enjoy that? Uh, it's, It's a few things. Again, we talked about yesterday the scouting part, hanging a grade on somebody. Remember that? Mm-hmm. And, and and I'm referencing back to this point. Um, looking at Malik Willis, man, he's a guy that kind of fits the mold of what Pittsburgh would like. Somebody that's probably overlooked a little bit, a lot of questions behind him, come from a small school, and what have Pittsburgh done time and time again? Kind of oh, really yeah. was on the forefront of getting guys from small schools. Where in the hell did Javon Hargraves come from? <laughs> See what I'm saying? Like yeah. with James Harrison, another guy, Steve McClendon, Troy, Isaac Redman. Come on, Fitzgerald Toussaint. The list goes on and on and on about guys that come from small schools that say, you know what? You might not fit their mold, but you fit ours. And I think it comes down to the mentality of those type of players. Smaller school, us against the world, or me against the world when you're in your uh, training uh, regiment, 
Um, but again, you know what I'll say about that too? It could all be BS and fluff because I've seen Coach T court guys like this before. Get real buddy buddy with them just to honestly paint Justin a picture Fields. of something else. Justin, Justin Fields. Fields. Just last was, year at the Ohio State Pro Day. Yep. It, it, it was the same similar situation. So I, I take it honestly as a grain of salt. If, as as a grain of salt, simply because you have two guys, three guys. You got two first rounders on your roster already. Dwayne Haskins and and friggin' uh what's yeah, Mitch Trubisky. Trubisky, yeah. And, well, also and, a and they hung a first on Mason Rudolph exactly. and left them off on that one. So technically, according to the Steelers Scouting Department, you got three first rounders on there and you want to incorporate a fourth. And this is the other part of this too. Most teams only keep three quarterbacks. So I think if for anything, all four of these guys, Mason Rudolph, Mr. Trubisky, Dwayne Haskins, and Malik Willis, if they do decide to keep them, will be on somebody's roster, except there's going to be one missing. Yeah, I, I could also see if in that event, I could see a, a trade of Mason for a whole bunch of reasons, because he'd have uh, every cause to be disillusioned about whether or not he'd ever get a chance uh, in Pittsburgh. <laughs> Uh, at a prime age, but but also let's let's think about when, when we're speaking about the optics of what we're seeing and all of the reports that uh, Malik Willis is basically hand mailed to Pittsburgh early in the offseason. Kevin Colbert in the front office told us Mason <laughs> Rudolph is our guy. Yeah, well, we, <laughs> they said he would be our star. Well, th- th- to be fair, Mon, they to they be fair. They said that he would he was he, if the season started today, he's our starting quarterback. Now at the time they said that. Yeah, he was literally the only quarterback under contract. So you can you can do that a bunch of different ways, splicing it back and forth. But I, I want to ask you, okay, if you're picking between Willis and Pickett, okay, forget whether or not the Steelers want to do it, forget whether or not they fall to twenty or whatever else here. But if you are a GM taking between those two, who do you mm-hmm. take? If you're Pittsburgh, think, if I'm Pittsburgh, I think I take Malik. I Why think he that? fits the mold because I'm I'm also a firm believer at that prime position right there. You might want to get away from where you're used to it. And Kenny Pig has been Pittsburgh all the way through, man. I think a, a different environment might be better for him as a pro also. You know what I'm saying? Especially being the franchise. And I got to look back at how much was he loved at Pitt before he actually became the guy and into the Heisman conversation. Like he's going to have to pander to that same crowd of convincing them that he's good enough, you know? So, and I think it's a lot easier for an outsider to be put in that role to where, oh, we we'll be patient with him. I don't know if there's enough patience in Pittsburgh for a guy like Kenny Pickett that played at Pitt and goes right across the hallway and try to make what Ben Roethlisberger obsolete. When we come back, we go from Malik to Tyreek. Back to the Ramon Foster Show, brought to you by the Get Go Cafe and Market, and the Chiefs and the Dolphins made a pretty significant trade today, uh, sending uh, the Chiefs sending uh, Tyree Kill to the Dolphins for a truckload of draft picks: a first, a second, a fourth, another fourth, and a sixth. And then, and this is what you'd better do after you give up that much. The Dolphins extended Hill with a four-year, $120 million deal that's got 72 guaranteed. Moan, this is a wide receiver. Yeah. I'll be lying if I told you I expected him to not only, okay, the money deal, cool. He's He is who he is. I didn't expect a wide receiver to get a first-round trade value. Not Man. only that, what is that? Five draft picks or six? Five, five, five draft picks. A one, the, and these are significant like positions that you're giving oh, yeah. up. Oh yeah. Um. Uh, again, and this is this is one of the the wildest parts of what I think the new NFL is, or what teams are starting to realize. It's this: if you want to win or compete for a Super Bowl, you better have a Tom Brady s quarterback that don't doesn't mind taking less money or has a wife that makes probably two or three times more than he does. <laughs> or you better go all in when it comes down to you having a young rookie quarterback who you think is really good because this deal right here and why Tyreek isn't with the Kansas city chiefs is because the Kansas city chiefs paid 
their starting quarterback a boatload of money. I think 10 years, $450 million. And if you listen to them, they and Patrick uh, Mahomes money, to be clear, kicks in the big money kicks this in year. this year. Yes. He has a roster bonus probably due or he probably just got it March 16th of $27.4 million. His cap hit this year is $35.7 million. They operated last year, well, 2020, the championship year uh, at $5.3 million and 2021 at $7.4 million. They got the ring before he got paid. And what happens on teams like this is you start to lose guys because when their talent exceeds what you thought it was going to do, i.e. Tyreek Hill, then you bye lose bye. him. Why is Devontae mm-hmm. out of uh, Green Bay? Probably other than the fact that he didn't want to play with Aaron Rodgers a little bit. It's simply because Aaron taking about $50 million a year. There wasn't enough money to justify paying him. So now Tyreek not only gets traded, but he also gets a new deal because Miami can not afford him because the highest paid position on most rosters is the quarterback. Tell me I'm wrong, DK. Oh, you can't. And, and, and as far as... Uh, you know, Pittsburgh's own recent history, you look at, I don't want to make Ben Roethlisberger sound excessively magnanimous for accepting salaries, you know, of 20 right. and 25. Okay. However, however, I think we, we can agree that when you look at his history of restructurings and then the deal that he took last year, he has taken less in order to try to give the Steelers cap room so that he could surround himself mm-hmm. with good players. Am I wrong? No, you're 100% correct. He did attempt to do that or did do that. But not only that, that's that's one of the reasons why I think I think the fan base, of course, were getting a little agitated by him continuously asking for, man, I need weapons, I need weapons. That's because if you go get five draft picks that are receivers, you hope two or maybe three of them hit, and therefore you got cheap talent around you, you know? So, so the NFL, to an extent, is a, is a, is a league where in order to – to win the Super Bowl or to you know get at or near the Super Bowl, it's best off to have a quarterback who doesn't yeah. cost you in that range. Now, there's another team in the division I think you can kind of safely put into that bracket, and that's Cincinnati. Yep. They got there, but they got there when Burrow's still really young and still yes. really new. It's a rookie deal. And as a result they were able to go and add a whole bunch of pieces. How does this, I mean, when you look at the Steelers, is this something that they might consider you doing with where they are now? You have to. Other than the fact that Pittsburgh still, I think, will have a really good defense. Offensively, these are the moves that are being made more than anything. Look at Justin Herbert and what they got going on in L.A. Yeah, you yeah, You know, yeah. like, there's, or you have a, a team like, let's say, the Rams that go get more talented, cheaper veterans. It's pretty much what they did. You know, so... I think if, if Pittsburgh is smart, we'll we'll see this. Like this first phase of watching them spend money in free agency, especially if the cap is going to go up again next year, also gives you a crease to say, if we do get a rookie this year and it's Malik Willis or Kenny Pickett, whichever one you, you decide to choose, you got to surround them with as much offensive talent as you can because, look, Deontay's coming up real soon. Chase is right after him. Najee probably is going to – we don't know what his, his situation is going to be simply because he's a running back. But you got to look at that and say, all right, Pittsburgh, you're next up because whenever Joe them push it in Cincinnati, like Pittsburgh's not going to be one, uh, far behind that. And Lamar in his situation is probably about to get sticky too because he's due. And yet at the same time, Moan, you're going to see from now until the – end of time that the NFL is going to be a league where you're always going to have 15, 20 quarterbacks mm-hmm. who are getting paid that big money. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. No matter how much cap it is. I mean, again, look at what Green Bay just did. Oh look at the decision they just made. And everyone's saying, yeah, it's great. It's awesome. You know, Aaron Rodgers will just make more receivers. He'll just pluck them out of the ground, you know, I, I, or the no, tundra, and, and tundra. Honestly, looking at the other part of it, too, you talk about Aaron Rodgers, but look at friggin' Deshaun Watson. If you mm-hmm. can't go to Spot Track and look at what his base salaries are from here on out, from 2023, I think they're $46.5 million, all guaranteed. So I ask that question. Cleveland might have gotten their quarterback and made them relevant. But what else can you actually do offensively to put weapons around him when you got a base salary that high? 
Watson's contract is five years and $230 million. Enjoy that with very, very little offensive supporting cast other than the great running backs that they've got. When we come back, it's our Hey Moan segment. Welcome back to the Ramon Foster Show, brought to you by the Get Go Cafe and Market, and it's always the third segment. Time for the Hey Moan portion, and today's entry comes from David, who says, "Hey guys, I love the show. Hey Moan, my question is: During the off season, we've heard that uh, Mike Tomlin has a lot of input in calling and designing the defense. How hands on was he with the offense?" during your time with the team? Um, he was very hands-on, and I think it was more on a, uh, a, a person-to-person level more than every, anything. Uh, he knows offense. He knows what he wants out of it also. You got to look at the other side of it as far as being hands-on. You had, I was there when he had been for the most part, well, all of his career also. So you knew what you were getting out of him. He made sure all of the pieces around were very much intact whether it was guys getting in shape, whether it was guys understanding, look, we're trying to boat race everybody we can this year. I think the (laughs) standard for operating is where his influence came into. Again, I've always approached Coach T. I always described him as the uncle you don't want to, like, tick off. You don't want to piss him off, okay? Do what you're going to do, but don't piss him off. And you know, like you said, he's a defensive-minded coach. That's his baby. But offense, he expects the same kind of uh, output when it comes to holding up your end of the deal. Like he makes no, no, I'm talking about no qualms about saying the team, the game is one in three phases. And he put emphasis on all three phases. And offensively, for a while, we had a strong output as far as the production we had on the field. So you were it was carrying, him. you were carrying the team. I could say that. Yeah, yeah you can say it. Uh, okay. <laughs> respectfully to my teammates. Yeah. Yes. And it, he was a huge part of that. Like he would come into a room and say, hey, man, you know how he does. Hey, man, we got to go score points this week because we're a little banged up. We're a little young on this side. And he would fully acknowledge that. And and like I said, for, for anything mentally, he had you locked in to look like, I know the defense can handle their own, but it's going to be because of us to win. Now, as far as the game planning and saying we need to do this and, hey, run the ball here and uh, we should pass it here, he had no issue with Ben running the offense as far as no huddle goals. He had no no issue with the rhyme and reason of how we ran or how we threw the ball either. It was just, look, y'all better produce because I know defensively we're going to do we're going to do as much as we can in some of those lower defensive years. But it was also times in which, look, he come in and just say, guys, we got to figure something out. I don't know who is going to do it, but please step up to the plate. And he challenged guys. And primarily he came into our room, the offensive line room, to kind of really push the group forward and those types of things. And that's because why? We're the biggest guys in the building, the biggest group. And we also had the <laughs> loudest mouths in the building, too. <laughs> so, so, See, you can say that and I can't. <laughs> yeah. But th- that's how he operated, though. He finds a group, man, that's a leader type group, and he pushes those guys to push everybody else. So game planning. But not strategically. That that's not- You're saying that nowhere near is involved. No, strategically, he's not going to sit there and say, hey, what's up with this route tree? No, absolutely not. And I think it's to the point to where he he also trusted the guys in place from uh, B.A. to Todd to to uh, Randy. And I'm sure his relationship with Matt Canada is, hey, hey, man, do your job. By every account, it's a good one. It's it's a good account. And it's not like I said, a, a pressure cooker type of situation. But Pittsburgh's always known for defense. He will come in and say, run that damn ball here and there when mm-hmm. we have to. Or it's it sounds coach speak, but he has a different way of delivering those types of things. So it's not as much as defense suggests, but it's um, the same demand for sure. That's a good hey moan. That was like, good. like the whole thing. And beginning, of course, with the question, which is why, you know, which is why you get the 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 people that are that are partaking in this show yes. to participate, right? I, 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 and by the way, I love the questions. There's so many that are in the comments that I see, and I'm like, DK, we got to pin this one, keep this one, okay? <laughs> uh, one in particular, we'll get to it. I promise you. Was 
I heard that James Harrison, no, I heard that Coach Tomlin didn't look James Harrison in his eyes. I was like, oh, what? no, wait, 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 don't give it away. Don't give it I'm away. Not, we I'm can't not. do two hey moans for the price of one. <laughs> uh, I've already seen tomorrow's, and I can promise you it's even better than that. Oh, even man. better than that. Yes. Uh, listen, we appreciate everybody who do. watches or, or, or listens to the Ramon Foster show. If you like what you're seeing, and you like Ramon, and who doesn't like Ramon? You know, <laughs> I don't like maybe like Gino Atkins or somebody. No, Probably man, even Gino, G- cool. Gino, Gino likes you. Yeah, that's my guy. I'm cool with Gino. All right, see, even Gino Atkins lined up against the man, and he liked him. So if you do too, go leave a, a review. One of those things, you know, where you like a star or something like that, and pass the word on here. Uh, we enjoy doing this. We the do. more people, the more people, the better. Anyway. We'll do another one tomorrow. I'll be right here ready for more.